Where's Mike at? He took off. Danny Merck was such a side character on Jersey Shore, he was basically an unofficial cast member. But not too long ago, he spoke out about the show's secrets behind the scenes, and what he exposed was honestly bizarre. When Danny was first introduced on Jersey Shore, his role to the cast was explained as both their boss and landlord. He owned and ran the Shore store that they were employed at, and also rented out the Shore house to them. But it turns out that not everything about Danny's role on the MTV reality show was true. Ever since the final season of the original Jersey Shore ended in 2012, Danny has given so many interviews about his experience. Some of them have even been relatively recent because of how significant he is in the show's history. In a few of those conversations, Danny revealed some Jersey Shore secrets that are going to leave you shocked. Believe it or not, Danny never asked MTV to be involved in the show. He didn't have to do any sort of audition either. I figured that Danny had at least filled out some sort of application to be discovered by the production company, but he opened up the HuffPost about how he really became a part of Jersey Shore and his explanation was so unreal. Danny claimed that he was approached out of nowhere by someone from 495 Productions, the company behind Jersey Shore. They were trying to find the perfect location for a reality TV show, and Danny's six-bedroom house fit their criteria. The production company's process of actually deciding on the house was seriously insane. According to what Danny told Vulture, a member of 495 Productions went inside his house to check it out every single week. Apparently, that went on for two whole months. I feel like Danny must have a huge amount of patience to wait out an intense process like that. Finally, the last person to inspect his house was Sally Ann Salsano, the founder of the production company. She allegedly handed Danny an envelope packed full of cash and asked him to have everything out of the house in 24 hours. Obviously, he agreed to let the cast live there and film, but he never specified how much money he got for it. I'm sure it had to have been a decent amount in order to take that kind of risk with his own home. So this meant that the landlord role that Danny had on the show wasn't exactly accurate. He'd been living in the Shore house for 10 years and basically up until the last minute. Also, he wasn't the one who painted the Italian flag on his garage door. That was an extra decoration added last minute by production. But not everything about Danny's involvement was a lie or slightly untrue. Danny being the cast's actual boss at the Shore store was true, and everything he said about them as employees including which cast members work the hardest, is pretty interesting. Danny believed that Mike the Situation Sorrentino was the worst worker. He revealed that Mike used more energy avoiding doing real work than the energy just doing his job would have used. I'm not too surprised that Danny felt like Nicole Snooki Polizzi wasn't much better, considering how she was rarely sober. But he also gave praise where it was due, and apparently a few other cast members were much more impressive. Danny admitted that Paul, Polly D. Del Vecchio, took the job seriously on the very first day, and Vinny Guadagnino was always looking to pick up extra shifts. But he also appreciated that Sammy's sweetheart Giancola was a pro at working the register, and that Jenny J. Wow Farley would usually end up convincing customers to buy more. In Danny's opinion, he didn't think the cast had it too rough while working at the Shore store. But during the show's first season, I have to admit, there was one negative aspect about the cast's income, and it's honestly ridiculous. The Jersey Shore cast was able to live in the Shore house for free, but they actually didn't earn anything for appearing on the first season. I can't believe they didn't make any money at all from the show until the second season. But when the cast first started working at the Shore store, Danny was paying them each $10 an hour which eventually increased to $20 an hour. After they went home once the first season was wrapped up, Danny quickly realized that his life was never going to be the same. After the cast was done filming and they left the Shore house, Danny moved back into his home. He told Vulture that the following day, there were tons of people knocking on his door and walking on his deck. Not only that, but there would occasionally be people spray painting Danny's door at night. As crazy as it sounds, there was a surprising amount of people who were angry about Jersey Shore and what the show claimed about its cast. This is so outrageous to me. Astonishingly, the majority of the cast isn't even originally from New Jersey. The only Jersey natives are Sammy Sweetheart and Dina Cortese. Vinny, Angelina, Jenny, Mike, Snooki, and Ronnie Ortiz Magro are all from New York, while Polly D is from Rhode Island. I wonder how many people actually fact check the cast's background just to validate their anger. I think it's wild that people have been so upset about the so called false representation. Supposedly, most of the critics felt like the show was giving New Jersey residents a bad reputation. But I feel like if that's the reason why they were damaging the Shore House, maybe they deserve that reputation after all. Thankfully, Danny was able to overlook the damage that was sometimes done to his property. And even with the vandalism, and zero privacy, he revealed that he still had no regrets about the Shore House being associated with MTV. I think that was clear after he continued to allow the network to film there. Not to mention, he let the rambunctious Jersey Shore cast use his personal home as their party house. Right after the first season, Danny explained why he would always be grateful for the show, and you'll never guess what his reason was. Apparently, the amount of success that the Shore store has had ever since appearing on MTV has skyrocketed. It's apparently bringing in an unbelievable income. Danny told HuffPost that the shop's parking lot is constantly full, and almost every person who stops in 
buys at least one shirt. Even his neighbor's pizza parlor and arcade have seen a record-breaking amount of sales. I guess the entire boardwalk had been helped by the fame from Jersey Shore. But money isn't the only reason why Danny is thankful for his opportunity to be involved. This is actually a little bit surprising to me. Obviously, after spending multiple summers with the cast, Danny ended up being friends with all of them. He even stays in touch with a few of them to this day. He revealed that occasionally some of them will text him to check how he's doing, and he sometimes does the same. Danny even attended Angelina's wedding in 2019, so I think it's safe to say that he's still pretty close with the cast. Danny doesn't spend all year in Seaside Heights, New Jersey anymore, though. He and his family own 17 Halloween costume stores in Florida, so that's where he lives from September to April. But I think he's figured out a very good plan for the Shore House when he's away. This is seriously bizarre. The Shore House is available to rent if anyone wants to see what the Jersey Shore cast members live like. However, it's recommended as a group rental because it costs $3,500 for only one night. Clearly, it's still a solid business idea since Danny seems to be doing extremely well financially. But there is something that may be worth explaining to potential visitors since MTV editing covered up an unbelievably strange detail. The Shore House doesn't actually have a hot tub over it, like how it appeared on Jersey Shore. I guess it is technically still on the same property. Believe it or not, the cast had to walk over to the Shore store whenever they wanted to hang out in the hot tub. If the minor inconvenience isn't a deal breaker for visitors, I'm sure staying the night at the Shore House is incredible. But what do you guys think? Are you surprised to learn that not everything about Danny's role on the show was true? What are your thoughts about how his house ended up being on MTV in the first place? Let me know in the comments below.